Well, someone suggested that the job of achieving a breakthrough on this nettlesome issue is a process that's coming across as a high-wire act while holding active sticks of dynamite. Well, someone who is picking up those sticks is Ismail Dabo. He's an APC member-elect representing the Toro Federal constituency in Bauchi State, and he's also the convener of the New Vision Support Group in the House of Reps, which has rejected the APC's preferred zoning template. And he joins me now in the studio. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you very much. Um, well, for a guy nice who's who's fighting his party, you look pretty well groomed. <laughs> I thought your hair would be all over the place. No, no. But, but what's the current situation in the House of Reps with this APC zoning issue? Well, we are, thank you for having me this mm. night. Uh, as you said, my name is uh, Ismail Dabo, member-elect uh, to represent the good people of Toro Federal I Constitution. I thought I just said that. Yeah. <laughs> So um, while we in the APC, we are not actually saying no to the party, no, but we want the party to do the right thing. And uh, we advise them that this arrangement does not reflect the actual uh, representation of the country. If you want to balance, you have to go back to drawing board and look at it carefully. Make sure you do the right thing that all the members will accept it, members will accept it and will agree with the zoning arrangement. That is what we are saying. But you agree with the concept of zoning? Yeah, if it reflects the true representation of the country. But as it is, it is uh, something else now. And we want the party to look into it as well. Well, let, let me understand this. Yeah. Um, you're, you're supporting Mukta Bektara, is that right? Uh, well, we have so many candidates. Yeah, but he's, he, he, he's he someone happen, you're supporting. He, yes, he happens to be one of the best candidates that right. is contested. So you're supporting him as speaker? Yes, if he's the, the best, then yes, we support him. Well, you're saying if. Yeah. Are you supporting him or not? Yeah, we are supporting him. He is okay. he's enjoying a very massive support from right. the House And of you support him? Yes. Right. So yeah. the reason I'm asking you that is yeah. you talked about the zoning arrangements yeah. be sh being balanced and in other words you're saying that what the APC has done doesn't reflect the country yeah. and doesn't reflect proper balance but what I don't understand is that Mukta Bhaktara whom you support is from the northeast and from Borno state which Absolutely. is the same place the vice president elect comes from I mean don't you see something anomalous about that power sharing arrangement and, and why it's likely not to be acceptable not just to the APC, but to the Nigerian people. I mean, you're, you're speaking from both sides of your mouth. There. Okay, um, uh, well, you, you can see presently, this government, we have a vice president from the southwest, and we also no, have... No, you have... You have a vice president from the north No, east. current government. I'm okay, talking right, about the current, current government. government. Right, okay, now, yeah. You can see the current government. Right. The vice president is from the southwest. Yes. And the speaker of the House of Representatives is also from the southwest. So on that uh, issue, I don't think it's a problem. For yeah, Mukhtar, but, but, if Mukhtar yeah. Betara appears to be the best candidate for Nigerians, and for the House of Representatives to spearhead the affairs of the House, then we go for him. We are talking about Nigeria. Right. We are not talking about a zone or a particular person. We are talking about who will bring stability and will bring who, who new is Nigeria. the best candidate? The best candidate. Right. That is what well, we are the, the reason about. I brought that up is because yeah. you started talking about the zoning arrangement. No, and it doesn't the, reflect the, the zoning arrangement, why I make a uh, comment on right. it, if you want to do something, then you look at what happened in the past, then you compare That it. becomes your precedent. That, you, that will be your pressing bottles, you understand, right. to see how you can go about it. But in this case, we, the new members of the National Assembly, what we are saying, we need a speaker that has the interest of Nigeria at heart. Somebody that can stand and speak for Nigeria. Right. So you Nigerians are tired. The Do you know that? The person you support does, and, yes. and the person the APC prefers doesn't. Um, well, what the Mukhtar Alu Betara as one of the candidates, I'm sure he is the best 
for this country. Right, but, but yes. what about uh, Abbas Tajuddin? Yes, Abbas Tajuddin, he's a Nigerian, but we know his uh, capability and uh, capacity so as a leader. So you don't think he can do the job No, 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 no. No, right. there is problem having him as a speaker simply because a lot of some section, very small section of individuals, mm -hmm. not even the president-elect. Let me tell you something. The president-elect is not in this zoning arrangement. I, I can assure you he's a true Democrat, and he wants the best to happen in the National Assembly. So this arrangement is just few people somewhere that they want to bring this man right. to make him the speaker of the National Assembly because of their personal interest. And we want them to understand that their time is over in the National Assembly. They should allow honorable members to choose their leaders. Mm. They need to understand this and they need to understand that the president, they have been going around saying the president said, president elect said this, said that. It is not true. The man is a true Democrat and he wants election to take place. And I can assure you, he can work with any of the candidates that, that right. are contested. So, so if your candidate, so the candidate that you support, had been chosen by the APC, you wouldn't be here opposing it, would you? No, of course, if he is not competent enough, I will say no. I, can, I cannot go with uh, somebody well, that... obviously you think he's competent. He so, is very so because, that... okay, this man, not only him, we have other better candidates that are contesting. But for Mukhtar Aliu Betara, he has a very large heart. Right. We need somebody that can accommodate everybody. And we need somebody that will stabilize the house. We cannot imagine entering that house and begin to have issues. Somebody that have the interest of Nigerians at heart. Right. Do you know that Nigerians are tired? They are looking up to us. So this country, of... we are in a serious problem. Inflation, economic crisis, security crisis. You need somebody that understands the budgetary system of the National right. Assembly to budget well, to manage the budget, to help the executive execute the budget so that we can see change in Nigeria. And that is why Nigerians voted us into okay. the National Assembly. So what kind of support does he enjoy in the House of Representatives? Well, uh, very, I can tell you, don't look at what is happening. The well, man is, we have to look yes, at what is no. happening. The man is enjoying a very large, large support, especially from the new members elect. Mm. In the National what Assembly. What numbers are you? What, what are your numbers? In, we, are in counting, terms of... we are counting around 245 to 250. Right. Yes. And um, how do you think in these circumstances, given that the APC has its preferred candidate, you have your preferred candidate, we've spoken to other people who think they ought to be the preferred candidates, how do you think the stubborn not of zoning can be cracked to your satisfaction. I want to make one point very clear. Yeah. It is not the APC that have a preferred candidate. It is a group of people. If you heard what the national chairman said, he advised those people that wrote to them, NWC, mm. go back and make further and wider consultation before you take decision. But they did not listen. The president-elect presently is not in the country. A lot of things are going wrong. Some people are trying to begin to form cabal before the uh, inauguration, and that will not happen. And I'm sure the president-elect will not allow them to do that. Presently, they are reviewing and they are looking into it. And I can assure you, the party, my party, APC, they know what they are doing. And in a few days, few weeks, you will see the outcome of, of their resolution. And Nigerians will be happy. They will allow us to go in there and vote the most competent, somebody that would drive the affairs of the National Assembly as expected mm. by Nigeria. And in order to push that point, you formed a caucus aimed at getting endorsements uh, for the candidates that you prefer um, as Speaker of the Green Chamber and all, all the rest of it. The group is called New Vision Support Group. And I've read that its membership cuts across all political parties and regions in the country. Is that right? Yeah, it's Tell very us a correct. bit about it. It's that. very correct. Why you see us members from different political parties mm. coming together to form uh, a new vision, new Nigeria, because of the current challenges we are facing in this country. Right. So we all agreed, irrespective of our political parties, 
to come together, join hands together, and choose, select the best out of us. And that is our constitutional responsibility. We choose the best out of us to pilot the affairs of the National Assembly. And we all agreed to that, and we're working towards that. Mm. And, and is that the... I mean, I'm trying to understand what the so what the agenda of the new vision support group is. Is is its sole agenda this particular crisis that that you're going through right now of trying to choose the leadership, or do you have other thoughts and ideas and reform programs in your agenda beyond the race for speaker and and leaders and so on and so forth? Like yeah. if, if not, if so, tell us about yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd see. The first time we came as new members elect, we spoke to ourselves. We, we have to come together mm. and unite. First, for us to chart a way forward for Nigerians, to change the narratives, most especially in the National Assembly, so that we have a perfect government. We, we don't have a perfect we, government. Yeah, 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 we all agree. We'll try to have a good yeah. government. We all agree to that. And after that, we said to ourselves, we have to bring this as part of our agenda to make sure that we select the best for Nigerians and somebody that will lead us in the National Assembly. So this is just part one aspect right. that we pick. This is the start. This is the start. And right. after inauguration, after swearing in, New Vision will continue to exist to ensure that we checkmate the leadership of the National Assembly to make sure that all policies all bills, motions, and whatever, the leadership must do what will help Nigerians and the interest should be Nigeria. Well, that sounds like a noble cause. Yeah. Um, but I suppose for the leadership of the National Assembly and the APC, they'll think of you as subversives. We are not. They know. We are stabilizers and we are for everybody. We are Nigerians and we want the best for the country. So we, we share common things together, they understand us, we understand them, and they are happy with what we're doing. We're saying the right thing, we're doing the right thing, and we want everybody to come and join. Let's do the right thing. That is what we're what, what we doing. Well, I mean, your party wants you to toe the line. I mean, we've had Felix Morka come here, who's the National Publicity Secretary of the APC, yeah. saying that the expectation is that you will fall in line. Uh, well, uh, when they do the right thing, will definitely fall in line. But if they fail to do the right thing, the leadership have advised them, do the right thing. We know those people in the party that are trying to push by all means. So, but the party leadership, I'm sure they will reverse back and they will do the right thing. They will allow us, the new members, to go in there and do the best for Nigerians. Well, I mean, you talk about Nigerians, when many Nigerians look at the APC and what is happening over this issue, but also over a lot of other issues, I mean, many of them see a party that is more divided than ever. Do you feel a sense of responsibility given the stand you've taken to try and change things? Um, you know, this is a democracy. And you know in politics, this is one of the characteristics. Mm. You disagree, you agree today, tomorrow you disagree. That does not mean APC is, APC is not strong or is in crisis. We are not in crisis. It's a leadership uh, correction that we are trying to put in place. And we will come out strong, stronger than before. And we are united. I can assure you that uh, all the aspirants, all the people contesting for the speakership, they are all members of the APC. And all of them, none of them have a terrible or a bad relationship with the uh, uh, National Working Committee, one, the president-elect, two, and the governors of the APC. They all have very cordial relationship. And I, I can assure you, the moment we finish our voting mm. on the floor, whoever that emerges as the speaker, you will see what will happen. The president-elect will embrace him and we are going to work together. And by the grace of God, that will happen. He's a true Democrat. We know him and he wants the best to take place. What if Abbas Tajuddin emerges? How would you react to that? If, if um, honorable members voted him, wait and see what will happen that day. If they voted Abbas Tajuddin, fine. It's, it's a game of number. That's why we are telling them, allow us to go and vote. Mm. We're not scared. Allow members 
to choose to select. Why are they worried? Some few people, why are they worried? In life, if God gave you power, your time has finished, and you fail to understand that your time has finished, you must install somebody for you to continue to, to, to control the parliament, to do things, to make so many things from outside or from behind the scene, mm. then you are deceiving yourself. Nigerians are watching you, members are watching you, and will not allow that to happen. So you should know where the problem is coming from. Before the zoning, let me ask you something. Can you pick a candidate, you that you are promoting zoning, you pick candidate before decision of the party. You have already selected a candidate that you are promoting. You have been, you have been campaigning for him. And the same man going around to tell Nigerians and to tell the APC that let there be zoning and the zoning should go to that particular person. Is there any sign of justice in all these actions? So what we are saying, we are, we are, we are advising the party, which I'm sure my party will do that, right. to, to, to take correction and they will correct it. So what do you think will happen next? Next, uh, we're waiting for them and uh, we're praying and we're hopeful that they will come out with an acceptable resolution mm. so that we can go there and cast our vote and select our leaders. Okay, I, I want to thank you very much indeed, uh, Ismail Dabo, for coming in and for talking to us about this. And he is a, an APC member elect representing the Toro Federal constituency in Bauchi State and is also the convener of the new Vision Support Group in the House of Representatives. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much.